Amen. So I want to welcome all of you tonight to the Lord's Bible study here in the village of Cordes Lakes. What an honor it is to have Mike and everyone associated with Mike up here tonight. Tonight we're going to have a Jesus Christ experience yes. through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we welcome you. There's going to be deliverance and healing. <laughs> amen and amen. amen. Let's all stand. I would like to pray for us. We're going to break some bread. If this is the first time here, Sunday evening, 6 o'clock, we pray at full. And notice I said full. We're going to pray over the meal, and we're going to ask Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to join us. Amen. Amen. I should probably stall and wait for another person to walk in. Yeah, he's coming. <laughs> But I just want, let's just lift our hands up and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your son, Jesus. Oh, in your name, thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And we say thank you for the Holy Spirit that you deposit in us. For you have freed us from our sinful nature and given us eternal salvation. So praise your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we just invite you here to, to the Lord's Bible study, your Bible study. Thank you, Lord. And we ask that you teach us and guide us and walk alongside of us each and every day. And Lord Jesus, we invite the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, into this room right now. This is yours. Have your way with us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we lay our hearts at your feet and we say thank you for this moment of time. Thank you for this moment of time. Thank you, Jesus. And we ask that you bless this food so it may strengthen and nourish our bodies. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you have a meal with us. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you remove all the chemicals from these foods. <laughs> yes. And Lord, we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, amen and amen. Yes and amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, amen. So, who's hungry? We all are. Who's hungry for the Word of God? Amen. Amen. <laughs> We'll come in to pray for you. Oh. We're surrounding you. <laughs> okay. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for meeting us here tonight, for using us as the willing vessels we are to serve our brothers and sisters, Lord. We thank you for pouring out the anointing, Lord. We thank you for readying these hearts to receive tonight, Lord. We thank you for blessing Brother Mike and his teaching, Lord, and his ministry. Pour out your spirit here now, Lord. We receive you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for this blessing and this anointing. Thank you for using us, Lord. It's all for your glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Wow, how wonderful to be here. Does everyone know Michael W. Smith? charge of us. Before we get started, I, I got a dictionary. And for some reason I looked up, oh, go ahead, enjoy eating. Let me just speak real quick. I looked up the word to forgive. Does everyone know the meaning of the word forgive? It's a powerful word. The Bible says if you don't forgive, what happens? You will not be forgiven. Isn't that amazing how that works? So I picked up the secular dictionary. <laughs> and this is what it says. To forgive. To give up resentment of a claim. Isn't that something? To grant relief from payment. To cease to feel resentment against another. Against an offender. How many times have we forgiven but we still remember? Mm. Let's forgive like Jesus. And how does Jesus forgive? Completely. 
a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he throws your offense out. Yeah. He doesn't remember. As far as the east is from the west. Exactly. It's like he ties it around a millstone and throws it into the abyss. Imagine if our God didn't forgive. Imagine if our God didn't forget. That's the problem. We as Christians need to set the example. When we forgive, let's forget. Why bring something up three, four, five years ago? Did you really forget? Yeah. I want to share that one word with you. We have uh, uh, Billy. Billy, would you like... Billy is going to read a psalm to us. And I'm going to read a psalm, and then Mike's going to take over with the Holy Spirit. Billy, what psalm would you like to read to us tonight? Uh, 32. Psalm 32. That's a good one. It's the psalm of David. Amen. Oh, what joy for those whose rebellion is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Amen. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, I was weak and miserable, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide them. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly confess their rebellion to you while there is time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep mm. it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sister. What's up? What's up? 32? Yeah. 32. Did everyone read your Bible? Did everyone bring your phone? I'm going to read Psalm number one. Psalm number one is very special, by the way. It's number one for a reason. And we know why it's there. For God made it number one, am I right? It's number one for a reason. Psalm number one talks about the two paths in life. There's only two. You have the godly and the ungodly. This is a very beautiful psalm. I'm going to read it out of the NIV today. I like to read it out of the NLT because it's so easy. <laughs> oh, praise God that we're all here. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. We're all under one roof praising God. Mm -hmm. How refreshing that is. How refreshing. And the Word of God is the living water that touches our dry, thirsty spirit. Amen. Amen. So Psalm number one. Does anyone know who wrote Psalm number one? I'm going to give you a clue. No one knows. It's anonymous. But we know it's written by the Holy Spirit. We know that, that King David, a man after God's own heart, wrote about 75. Moses wrote one. It's beautiful. He wrote Psalm 90. So let's start off with Psalm number one. And it goes like this. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who does not walk. You get that? Blessed is the man who does not walk. In the counsel of the wicked. Or stand in the way of sinners. That means standing with them. Or sit in the seat of mockers. 
There's a lot of mocking going on today. There's a lot of gossip. I want to share this with you as soon as I'm done. There is a lot of gossip. And I realized as I meditated on that today, yesterday, the word gossip is like go sip. Go sip from the devil's cup and start mocking. So we got to be careful who we listen to, what we're speaking. So I'm going to start off again. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, on his law, the Bible, he meditates day and night. Night and day. How refreshing to meditate on God's Word. He meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water. Have you ever seen a tree without water? Yeah, especially out here in the desert. So we, we are like a tree planted by streams of water. Notice I said we. Because we are children of God. And as we're reading and praying, we get water. We are like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. And whose leaf does not wither. The Bible says whatever he does prosper. But i got to tell you, whatever we do for the Lord, we prosper. You know what I'm saying? Amen. May the good Lord bless the work of our hands. Now that's the good news. I want to share the bad news with you. Is that okay? There's a flip side. So whatever we do, we prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we're born again, filled with the Spirit of God. Verse 4 says, not so the wicked. Does everyone know what a dandelion is? Yeah. A little weed that has it. A beautiful little dome, right? Watch this. Not so the wicked. I wish I would have brought one today. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Can you imagine that? They have no substance. As we're walking with God and reading and praying, we have substance. Because we're walking on the rock, the foundation of Jesus. So not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, it says that right there. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. And this is what it says. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Does everyone know that word perish, what it means? Destruction. Destruction. To be wiped out, ruined. Yeah. You see, the good Lord put us on a path of righteousness for His name's sake. Not ours. It says that. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we'll fear no evil. For God is with us. Amen. Thank you for letting me share Psalm number one with you. It's one of my top ten favorites. <laughs> I love you guys. Welcome to the Lord's Bible study. I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Our brother Mike. Amen. 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 Yeah, good evening. Good to see you, preacher. And see you in a while. Bless you. <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad you came out tonight. I hope if uh, you need prayer, you won't leave before we get to you. Yeah. So, we'll stay here as long as you need it. That's how we roll. Uh, I came out of the um, Assemblies of God denomination. I was in it for years. And uh, I met a lot of great people in that denomination. A lot of anointed ministers, wonderful teachers, all kinds of great people. But when I left being a secular counselor, I started my career as a Christian counselor, I noticed that the uh, Christians were basically the same as the sinners. And that bothered me. 
because I was expecting there to be a difference in the clientele. And I was utterly amazed that the uh, born-again, spirit-filled Christians were as sick as the sinners I had worked with for 25 years as a secular counselor. It was stunning. And uh, that was something I had to investigate. I had to get some answers from God because it didn't seem to make any sense. If somebody's born again, they by definition have the Holy Ghost. And if they're baptized in the Holy Ghost and they have different gifts, by definition, they're a uh, very changed person. Different person. A new creation, so to speak. Yeah. Right? Yes. And this is what I learned in the Assembly of God religion. That's what I learned studying the Bible. And I was amazed that uh, it was basically not true that these people that I, were, that I was counseling who had the Holy Spirit uh, were as sick as people that didn't have him. That, that shocked me. Shock. And uh, I had to find out why. And I had to go to the Lord and get me some answers. Because none of this made any sense. And I noticed in the Assemblies of God, I, I was uh, an altar worker. I ran the men's ministry. I ran the outreach ministry. I went to church four times a week. Monday night prayer. Wednesday night. Twice Sunday. Then we had Christmas. Thanksgiving, right? different special events. I was, I was churched out. I was going to church all the time because I wanted to serve the Lord. And uh, I had to find out why these Christians were sick because many people in our congregation had been saved for years. They had been saved for years. And they were still suffering from the same stuff the sinners were. Periods of depression, chronic illnesses, anxiety, loneliness, divorces, crazy children, rebellious kids. They had all the stuff that I had seen as a secular counselor for 25 years. I was shocked. Wouldn't you be? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I still am. God revealed it to me. Yeah. And I'm going to share it with you. As a secular person, I didn't know anything about God and you know I got trained in psycho psychology and counseling and everything and uh, I didn't understand anything about curses. I, I didn't believe in curses as a secular person. I thought it was you know voodoo or something. Traditions, weird stuff. We, we didn't give any any attention to that in the secular field. We didn't follow any of that religious stuff or new age stuff. We didn't believe in that. The psychiatry doesn't have room for God. Okay? So I was tra trained, you know, straight psychology. And God showed me that curses follow people 
and they don't automatically leave after they get saved. And that's kind of what I'd been taught in the Assembly of God religion that once you got saved, all your demons just magically left, all your curses magically dropped off of you. Everything was wonderful. And I was seeing that was false, that things were not wonderful. And these people I was praying with at the altar at the church, we had altar calls there. They had long benches. You know, you come down and pray. And these people were praying over the same things that I saw were with regular people that didn't go to church. Marital problems, problems with kids, financial problems, physical problems, weird illnesses, emotional problems, mental problems, anxiety disorders, depression. Some had bipolar. I had to have an answer because none of it made any sense, from, sense to me and frankly it was damaging my faith. I had faith challenges. Because uh, you hear all these glorious sermons. All these crackpot TV preachers telling you, oh, it's just wonderful, it's glorious, this is great, and that's great, but you get down in the trenches where I'm at, counseling people one-on-one, -on -one, you see, no, that's hyperbole. That's a bunch of marketing crap. Yes. The reality is different. And God showed me that born-again, spirit-filled Christians can have their prayers blocked. Because I had run into many Christians who had been praying over certain things for years, and it never happened. This person never got healed. That person never got better. This wasn't fixed. The finances, everything kept screwing up and that bothered me I felt uneasy with it I was very confused as to why so many good people that I'd met were having trouble getting their prayers answered. That bothered me. And they would come to see me for counseling and they were going over stuff that happened to them when they were a kid. Pains and wounds. Stuff that happened decades ago. That bothered me. I saw many people who had been saved for years, spirit-filled, had, had gifts, spoken tongues like a freight train, preachers, ministers, missionaries, they all came to me. And they all had the same problems everybody else had. That's concerning if you're a counselor. <laughs> Other people probably don't even think about it, but I had to think about it because I had it. And I'm right in my face. <clears throat> and I had a huge hump to get over here. I had to have some answers. And God showed me. I wanted to share it with you. Whether you're a Christian or not, it doesn't matter. When you were young, if you screwed your parents over, even though your parents were 
like 100% at fault. They were abusers, they were drunks, they were whatever. If you screwed your parents over when you were young, the demons dropped a curse on you. Thou shalt not dishonor thy mother nor thy father. God shocked me when he revealed to me that that verse was, was unconditional. That it didn't matter, my parents were drunks, it didn't matter what my parents did to my sister and I. All the money was gone, everything drunk, fighting every night, cops at the house, the usual stuff. It didn't matter what they did. If I, if I ran them down, cursed them, criticized them, degraded them, complained about them, embarrassed them, mistreated them, even though they were at fault, 100%. I wasn't an alcoholic as a kid. I didn't spend all the money. I didn't cause poverty to eat my family up. I wasn't wasn't my idea to be white trash. They did it. And God shook me. <laughs> he showed me it was my fault. I hated my dad and I had no respect for him, my mother. I loved him, but I didn't respect him. And I loved my dad, but I hated him. One of those deals. Yeah. And God showed me that I was at fault. It was me. I did it. I had caused the devil to put a curse on me. I didn't know anything about it. And I realized that all these people were coming in to see me from the Assemblies of God, saved, spirit-filled, speaking in tongues, serving God, ministers, whatever. They didn't know it either. And that's why they couldn't get healed. They had arthritis, fibromyalgia, joint problems, stomach problems, organ problems, mental problems. I couldn't believe it. Because they told us, you know, as soon as you get saved, oh, Jesus was your curse. It's all gone now. It's all good. I was wrong. I went back to my dad. I told him I was sorry. I loved him. I forgave him. I hated the way he treated my mother. I had resentments built up. I had to repent of that. The same fell on me. I had blown it. And I realized that I don't care what my dad did to me. I got to get this curse off me. I can't live the rest of my life with broken relationships, finances going up and down, weird body illnesses, sicknesses, and I can't take that. And I went back to my dad. I patched it up with him, man. I repented of it. My mom was already dead. I went to the Lord. I begged him. <laughs> I 
I'd hurt her. I didn't support her. I resented her. I disrespected her. She seemed like an idiot to me. I was on my face at the altar, begging for mercy. I couldn't apologize to her. She was already gone. I'd give anything to be able to do that now. I'd crawl on my hands and knees. I would crawl over to her. If I could, I can. I had to get that mother dad curse off of me at any cost. Because that curse is unconditional. It doesn't matter whether you're saved, spirit-filled, and preaching on TV. Curses follow you. They land when there's a cause. Proverbs, I had a cause. I hadn't made that right. And if you'd like to be healed tonight, you certainly can be, but not without fixing that. We're not going to pray for you. You're going to repent of that first. Hardcore. You stabbed your parents in the back, even if they were 100% at fault. It doesn't matter. They're not here now. You are. They don't want to be healed. You do. You've got to fix it between you and the Lord. If you fix it, get healed or not. Yeah. And don't give the Lord a bunch of crap now when you're praying. You don't like crappy prayers. Lord, I'm doing all this for you. I'm preaching. I'm teaching. Garbage. You better get that fixed. Or you're going to die with it. Weird illnesses, depression, anxiety, loneliness. You're going to die with it. Well, Brother Mike, I go down the altar and I pray to the Lord. Hey, good for you, but I see through that, so does the devil. He sees you praising down there. He doesn't care. He knows you got a problem with your mother. You didn't fix it. He's not going to back off you. He doesn't have to. Thus saith the Lord. Thou shalt not dishonor thy mother or thy father. It doesn't give an exception. Do you have bad parents like I did? Maybe you had worse parents than I did. Probably did. Doesn't matter. We're going to fix that tonight. Aren't we? One person is, okay? Yes. Amen. It's going to be a bad Amen. night for me. We're going, to, we're going to fix that. This looks like a bad night for me. <laughs> then God opened my eyes again. Brother Mike, Christians are as sick as sinners. Huh? I love you guys. Our brothers have to leave go. Early. You going to go? Yeah. Oh, okay. I can drive me nuts. All right, love you. Let's go. I really got that much said. I really did. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Nice to see bye you, guys. Bye, 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 bye. Love you guys. Love you guys. God showed me another one. Right. Now remember, I'm counseling these Christians now. I'm not doing sinner counseling anymore. Right? <laughs> I'm doing a Christians. Now that's amazing. After the father-mother curse was revealed to me, I had another one. Guess which one this one was? This hit me home because I 
had multiple marriages. When I was a sinner, Thank you, Brian. I had multiple marriages, divorces. Then I realized I had cursed myself again. I didn't even know it. Mike, can you say that over again? I'll read it to you. I had another curse on me. And so did all these other people. Check it out. I was the husband. There's no wife verse like this. Just husbands. There's no wife verse. Likewise, husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge and give honor to the wife as the weaker vessel being heirs together of the grace of life so that your prayers are not hindered. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Well, I was like every other idiot in the neighborhood. I married people that I wasn't supposed to get married to and married people God didn't okay and of course, the relationships fell apart, strife and stress and all that stuff. And uh, I had done it to myself again. I figured, hey, my wife's nuts. Who cares what I say to her? What I do to her? She's disrespecting me. Then it dawned on me. Now I get it. That's why my prayers aren't being answered. The Greek word for honor in that verse is tomeo. It means to place value upon. To see something as valuable. Well, you can't see something as valuable that you're verbally trashing. Or denigrating or criticizing or mocking. Well, when I found that out, I had to do it again. Calling my ex-wives. Hey, this is Mike. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Even if they were wrong, I was caught making the call anyway. Because they didn't want to be healed. I did. I'll be healed. So if you screwed over your ex-wife in the past or your current wife and you're not treating them right, I got some bad news for you. You're not getting healed tonight either. Well, my wife did this and that. Yeah, my wives did that too. My wives were crazy. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I responded negatively. I fought back. I defended myself. Well, you did this. Well, you did that too. Did the whole thing. What happened? The devil got me again. He got me again. You had some tough calls over the years? Try that one. Calling your ex what? Hmm, that's a fun call. <laughs> but see, they didn't want to be healed. I did. I was wrong. So 
so my prayers are not hindered. I had all these people coming in for counseling. They, I need this. I need that from God. I can't get this prayer. I can't get that one. Oh, really? Here's why you can't get it. Your mom, your dad, your wife. Anybody following me? Yes. 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 Amen. Why can't most, why don't most Christians get their prayers answered? I'm, I'm giving you some clues here. Yeah. And if you're not listening, I pity the fool who's not listening to me tonight. I need a little Mr. T on you. Yeah. <laughs> I pity you the rest of your life. It's going to be miserable. God showed me Revelation number three. Faith. I was shocked to find out these Assembly of God Christians didn't have real faith. I was stunned. One day Jesus cursed a fig tree. He goes over to the tree, shuffles around in the branches. There's no figs there, but it's fig season. So this fig tree is a screw-up. There were supposed to be figs on it. He's starving. He's been walking for miles. There's no figs on it. So Jesus decides to make this a teaching session, and he curses this fig tree right in front of the disciples. Bang! Nobody thinks anything of it. They go walking. Well, the next day they come walking by there. And this tree is withering from the roots up, which is not possible. The trees always wither down. They don't wither up. And Peter, the big mouth of the group, says, Lord, this tree you curse, look, it's dying already. And Jesus says, well, look over there. And there was a big mountain over there. He says, listen, if you have faith... And doubt not, you shall not only do that which is done unto this fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Mark 11. Everybody has that verse memorized, don't you? Yeah. The TV kooks all have it memorized too. And they use it to milk money out of people. It's called the Word of Faith movement. They blab out verses, blah, 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 and they say, that'll do it. And it doesn't do it. I got all these people sitting in my office blabbing out verses, and they got all these problems. As they say in Singapore, something wrong. There's something wrong here. Hello? I hope you're listening to me. Well, I didn't know what was going on until I actually read that verse. And I took a look at the Greek text and I was absolutely shocked. It says in the verse... If you have faith and doubt not, the Greek word for doubt there is diakrino. It means to vacillate. Diakrino means to not be sure of which one you're looking at here. Is it the red one or the white one? Is it, shall we do it Tuesday or Wednesday? Shall we go here or there? Shall we go up or down? Hmm, can you help me? Shall we do, what shall we, hi, what? And God showed me that if a Christian prays a prayer and they even have a smidgen of doubt in it, the little bit of doubt wipes out the prayer. And so I realized that the people that were teaching faith on TV were A, false teachers, and B, lying to people because they were saying, your problem is you need to build up your faith.
which is a lie. Your faith is fine. Your faith is fine. But it's contaminated with If you take faith and you contaminate it with doubt, it wipes out the faith. That's good. That's good. So by me telling people, you need to just read more Bible verses, quote them over and over again, talk yourself into it, I was shocked to know that that doesn't work. What has to be done is the faith has to be uncontaminated and you must remove the doubt. Yes. There's nothing wrong with your faith. You have plenty of faith to be healed and delivered tonight. Faith has never been your problem. Diacrino, vacillation. Lord, please, please heal me tonight. Please heal me. Uh, see, my doctor's appointment Wednesday. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute here. I didn't hear that. Well, I'd heard that often. I'm not knocking doctors. This isn't about doctors. If you have faith, but you also doubt. If you pray a prayer and then you add a but in it, there went your prayer. I'll prove it to you. James chapter 1. Do any of you lack wisdom? Well, that's, I thought that was a really silly question because everybody has some lacking of wisdom, particularly me. So the answer was, yes, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it, do any of you lack wisdom? Let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally. The Greek word means bountiful, overflowingly. Givey, givey, givey. Yeah. And it shall be given him. Oh, great. The TV guy stopped there. I'm not on TV. What's the rest of it say? There's a but in the verse. But let him ask him. But let him ask in faith. Yeah. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Nothing wavering. Same Greek word. Diacrino. Vacillation. Huh? Hmm? What? Uh. I shall I? What? For he that wavers, diacrino, vacillates, is like a wave in the sea, driven by the wind, tossed around. Let not that Christian think they shall receive anything from the Lord. Isn't that what it says, ma'am? You just read it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mother, father, wife, mm -hmm. doubt, no prayers.
A dying, desperate dad brings his son with autism and every other disability you can ever imagine, Mark chapter 9, brings him to Jesus. He gets intercepted by a bunch of YouTube deliverance ministers. <laughs> the YouTube deliverance kooks are now overrunning Christianity. They're all over the internet. They're all crazy. He takes them to the disciples, the guys on YouTube. They can't get the steaming out of the kid. So the dad sees Jesus coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration, and they run over to him. So the, these, these nine kooks are not doing it. Here, there's, here comes three more kooks, and there's Jesus. Let's try a foursome now instead of a... They run up to him, and the dad's in tears, as you can imagine, having a psychotic, deranged, autistic, violent, insane son. Who wouldn't be in tears? Everybody in tears. He says, Lord, I brought my son to your disciples. I, the, he's got a deaf and dumb spirit. They couldn't cast him out. They couldn't get him out of there. Jesus said, well, how long has this happened to him? And in the Greek text it says, Pideon, since he was an infant, since he was an infant, this demon got into my son as a baby and destroyed his life and gave him multiple disabilities and multiple mental illnesses and autism and everything else. This kid's destroyed. On top of that, he keeps trying to kill himself. He jumps into the fire. He tries to stab himself. He cuts himself. He goes crazy all the time. He's killing his mother and I. He's killing our family. He said to Jesus, if you can do anything, if there's anything you can do, have mercy on us. Help us. If you can do anything at all, help. Jesus said, if. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. What was the father doing? He was doing exactly what I would have done. I had faith. I brought my son. That took faith. I brought my son to the disciples. That took faith. I brought him all the way here. That took faith. But I was doubting. I had mixed my faith with the cancer of doubt. He was doubting. What's the pattern here? It's very clear. To get the kids healed, you got to get the parents healed first. Jesus says to the dad, if you can, they, they're both ifing each other. He says, if you can help me, please have mercy. He says, if you can believe. Then the dad says one of the most important things anywhere in the New Testament. It was unbelievable. Absolute genius. He says, he says, Lord, I do believe. Help me with my diacrino. I'm, I'm fascinating. I believe, but I don't. I, I, thank you. These Christians I was counseling, a lot of them were old. No offense, but some of you ain't spring chickens. Some of you are like, are like me. Yeah, we old now. You know who you are. We old now. Yeah, yeah, old. 
These people had the same problems when they were old they had when they were young. They had the same problems before they were saved that they had after they got saved. Yeah. Well, they weren't going to the right church. <laughs> what? <laughs> the church has nothing to do with it. And they can't fix it. <clears throat> if you have faith... Perfect. But if you mix in doubt, there goes the money, there goes the mission field, there goes the fibromyalgia, got to keep that. There's the arthritis, got to keep that. There's the depression, got to keep that. How come I got to keep that? Mother, father, if you're a husband, wife. Doubting. That's why you got to keep it. So faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, if "You will not only do this to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, say," he said, "This mountain be removed and be thou cast down the sea; it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you desire." Believing you shall receive. The Greek word for believing there answers what she just said. It's the Greek word pistuo. It means to step out on your faith before you get an answer. Jesus. People like Wigglesworth, John Lake, Sister Edder, Catherine Kuhlman, Let's go down the list. A.A. A. Allen down here. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Oral Roberts. Okay. These, per these people saw miracles till they were coming out of their ears. Why? They understood the Bible study I've shared with you tonight. They got it. I had an oh my god moment. Have you ever had one of those? I was wrong. I was memorizing scriptures and then when I started having trouble with my crazy self, I started barking them out. I would quote, so you'd quote them out loud. Sometimes I'd yell them out. I had no idea I was doing nothing for myself. Nothing. It wasn't helping in the least. Why? I was doubting. Wigglesworth got it. See, they lied to me at the Assembly of God Church. I said, well, God just choose, chooses certain people for certain things, and he gives them, gives them a high anointing for this and that. And I, I heard all that crap, and that really bothered me. That bothered me. Because the devil kept whispering to me, God is a respecter of persons. Look, he gave this guy all this stuff. No, God didn't give that guy anything. Wigglesworth got it. Any Christian can get it. Amen. At any age. Amen. We'll take that. See, people that talk the most and the loudest about blabbing out Christian crap, they're usually the most insecure ones. Mm -hmm. Well, that very nice. We're not going to invite him back to Cords Lake. <laughs> okay, well, then don't invite me back. But I'm telling you, i got to tell you the truth before I leave here, whether you invite me back or not. 
Running your mouth doesn't do any good. This is where the anointing lies. Right in the spirit, man. Right in here. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Yep. <coughs> this blah, 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 blah. That didn't do you any good. Anybody can run their mouth like a busted chainsaw. Who cares? This is what Wigglesworth had. This is what Lake had. This is what Etter had. This is what Kuhlman had. Hello? They said, hey, God said this. I don't doubt it anymore. I'm not going to doubt it. That's the way it is. And then the Holy Ghost moves. Yeah. I saw so many church people healed, it's unbelievable. I've seen thousands of people healed. What, do I do? what did I do with them? Pump them up with a bunch of Bible verses? No! Did you hurt your mother when you were younger? And then I would take them through repentance. Did you hurt your dad? Did you stab him in the back because you hated him? Did you? How about your stepdad? Did he sexually abuse you? Oh, you, did you trash him behind his back? Really? We're going to repent over that right now. Why? Because my stepdad? No. You need to be healed. This isn't about your stepdad. This is about you. My dad was an a-hole. Hey, I get it. I'm with you. This isn't about your dad. This is about you. Your dad's not here tonight. He's either dead or he doesn't want to be healed. You're here. You want to be healed. You didn't bring your disabled son here. You brought yourself here. He that wavers is like a wave in the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. <clears throat> Let not that man or woman think they will receive anything from the Lord. But wait a minute, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I lead the Bible group, I speak in tongues. It doesn't matter. Verse 8. Verse 8. A double-minded man or woman is unstable in all their ways. What way? Finances, marriage, health, mental health. Everything's unstable. What's a double-minded man? I just told, it just told you. I, what, should I, shall we, are, is this it or is that, how about, shall I go? Brother Mike, you're kidding me. Hey, I'm not kidding you. That's what it said. Don't get mad at me about it. I'm a visitor. Now you know why you can't get healed. I just told you. What about the anxiety? What about the nightmares? What about the bad dream? Forget it. You're not, you're not getting healed. Mother, dad, wife, wavering, 
doubting diacrino vacillation hmm mm -hmm. You know, you can quote a Bible verse till you fall out of your chair and faint. You know what good that's going to do you? Nothing. Listen, I got a surprise for you. Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons read the Bible and they're not even saved. That's a cult. They're going to hell. And they read the Bible. Reading the Bible will do you absolutely no good. Unless you stop doubting. Vassalization. Somebody told you you didn't have enough faith to be healed? That's a lie. Your faith is fine. The doubt is the problem. If you remove the doubt, it's easy to get people healed. <sighs> Why? God wants to heal people. He likes it. It's part of his personality. He enjoys it. God's a good God. The Bible says God is love. I know this is going to sound nuts, but in John 15, Jesus told the disciple that Father likes you. It's the Greek word phileo. It means to be fond of someone or to like them. In John 14, he said, Father loves you. That is agape. Well, liking is different than loving. Correct? Many parents love a child, but they don't like them. Why? Because they're certified screw-ups. They cause them nothing but strife and stress and pain. They don't like them, but they love them. Mothers are like that. Mothers are like that. Hello? Your Heavenly Father not only loves you, He likes you. He likes to be around you. That's what it says. Phileo. He likes you. Blocker number five. If you don't like yourself, you're not getting healed tonight. If you're hard on yourself, if you're critical of yourself, man, we're in trouble. Because your Heavenly Father isn't. He doesn't see you that way. He likes you. He wants to be with you. You know why you don't like yourself? It's self-unforgiveness. Okay? That's what it is. This last thing I'm going to teach you is something that's almost never taught in a church. I need you to understand it. Forgiveness is not good enough. The Greek word for forgiveness is a theme. It means to release. Huh? Huh? I'm going to a theme and forgive this cookie. Yeah. I let it go. Yeah. When you become a born again Christian, the blood of Christ releases you from every sin you ever committed. And you and your spirit man in here, you're sinless. You're sinless. Thanks be to God. Boom. Why? Because your sins have been released from you. They're gone. Forgive.
Jesus said, if you bring your gift before God and come to the altar, and you remember when you get there, you've got ought against somebody, don't offer God your gift. That's weird. Notice he didn't say unforgiveness. He said, I teach ought. Notice that? Matthew 5? Remember? I gotta write it down. You recall that? Preach. <laughs> Matthew 5, if you bring your gift to the altar, right? Yeah. If you have a grudge against one. Ought. Ought. Yes. Ought. Ought is different than forgiveness. If you had a rotten husband who beat you and cursed you, and you got saved, and God told you you, you got to forgive them, you can forgive them. Forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness is a state of mind. You choose, because of your faith in Christ, to forgive your stinking husband. Correct? Mm -hmm. But, emotionally, you feel like you don't want to be around that person ever again. You don't want to talk to him again. Your sister, your brother, whoever it was that screwed you over. That's what ought is. That's what ought is. You forgave them, but you got this yucky bleh, feeling for the person in your soul. Right here. No prayers. Yeah. Prayers lost. I told you what I did. Calling the ex-wives. What did I have? I had ought. That crazy biatch. I wanted to run over with a car. Ought. I had to make that call. And I had to tell her. I apologize. I was wrong. Why? Because they wanted to get healed. No! I wanted to get healed. Right. I made the call. Because right. I wanted to be delivered. Somebody's got to be listening to me tonight. Amen. I know somebody is. That's right. What I'm revealing to you tonight is, as a professional counselor, what I saw in all these Christian clients and why they couldn't get healed. I'm, I'm trying to give you a peek behind the curtain so you can see how the spirit world works and why Bible verses and prayers don't work. They're being blocked. The great prophet Daniel prayed for 21 days till he got his breakthrough. During that 21 day period, he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know shoot from Shinola. He had no clue. Nothing. What's going on out there? Blackness. He didn't know anything about it. The angel came to him. Remember? What is it? Eight? Daniel 8 or something? 8 or 9? 8 or 9, 10, right in there? The, da the angel came to him and said, Hey, I t as soon as you start praying, God heard your prayers. The minute you start, 21 days ago, as soon as you start praying, bang, God said, Go, answer the prayer. But I was hindered. My prayers were hindered. How do your prayers get hindered? Mother, father, wife, Vassalization, doubting. Ah. Not unforgiveness. You already forgave them, right? Yeah, you already forgave them. Not good enough. Your prayers are going to still be blocked. You know why? Ugh, you got a yuck factor for that. Rotten SOB. Ugh. They did this and that to me. I got molested. I got raped. They stole my money. They took my kids. They stabbed me in the back. But I forgive them. <laughs> Forgiving them doesn't work. 
it has to have the second feature. If it doesn't, the person, healing never comes. The pain never goes. Uh, the heartache never leaves. I don't know how many times somebody said to me, Look, Brother Mike, when I get to heaven, I'm just going to ask the Lord, what, what, why weren't all these prayers answered? I don't need to go to heaven. I, I found out why. I, I found it out of that book right there, preach, yes. right there. Yes. I found out five. Five things. Five things. I just gave you five things you will never hear in a church. You will only hear at Cords Lake at the community center. Amen. Yeah. Five things. Sweet. Forgiveness is not enough. Yeah. Ought must be removed. Some preachers call it inner healing. Some ministers call it inner healing. I am doing inner healing. Yeah, that's, a, that's ought. The ought is in the soul blocking your prayers because you still can't stand that person. Your sister, your sister slept with your fiance. Remember that? Your brother stole the money. Took the money out of the account. Remember that? You hated their guts, but you became a Christian. But they told you I had to forgive. But you told the Lord, okay, I'm going to forgive. I forgive them. Hey, your brother's on the phone. I'm busy. I don't want to talk to... What's that? I'm busy. What is that? Ought! Ought yeah. yeah. says, I don't want to stop it. Yeah. yeah. Ought blocks your healing, destroys your finances, wrecks your marriage, and leaves you busted. The devil's got all kinds of blessings for you. Oh, yeah. More sickness, more illness. You get to die with. No money, you get to die with no friends. Oh boy, what a wonderful life he's got planned for you unless you fix these five. Then he's helpless. You get healed. You know what one of the worst odds is? after spouses, siblings, churches. You can't imagine how many people are just wounded to the bone after going to a church. Hey, I got an idea for ministry. Nobody wants to hear your idea. Oh, gee, ooh, that hurt. Ought, seed, ought, boop, right in the soul. Can I help with this? No, you're, you're, you're an idiot. We'll have Bob do it. Oop, <laughs> there it is. Boop, ought, dropped in the soul over at the uh, Faith Friendly Church of the on Cords Lakes over here. Faith Friendly Church right over there. You wouldn't believe how many people are hurt and offended at churches. Yeah. We've been there. Boom. The ought lands in your soul. You know why the devil told that person to trash you? Not for them. They've already got them in the bag. They wanted you. The demons took you. Because they wanted you to. A little bit of ought is all I need to block your prayers. Your kids aren't going to get healed. Your daughter's not going <laughs> to stop getting knocked up. Your, your son's not going to get off meth. Uh-uh. No. Wow. The floor closure's not going to stop. It's like, no. It's not going to happen. Why? You had five things you got to take care of tonight. you got five. And you can't afford to do four. I had to do all five. This isn't a holier than thou. I, I did all this. I know about it because I did it personally. You wouldn't believe how fast the Holy Ghost will jump on somebody. 
when they start wiping these five out, you wouldn't believe it. On second thought, you would. He just plows right into them. Demons start flying out. They get healed. Nobody touches them. Nobody prayed for them. Thanks. Thanks. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. And you cannot read the Bible and take pieces out of it. It's all written in context. Right. You can't just pull a scripture out and throw it at somebody and hope it sticks on their fat, ugly face. It doesn't work like that. It's written in context. This is a textual material. This went with that. This went with that. If you're looking in the Bible and you see an and or a but there, that's a conjunction. In the Greek text, it's a conjunction. That means that this verse is connected to that verse. Thus saith the Lord, and thus saith the Lord. Those two verses are connected. It's like therefore. You can't just take that out and use that verse separately. That's a bastardization of the scripture. You can't do that. You're going to teach false doctrines. You have to read the whole verse like I did. I read the whole verse. This part sounded great. I felt like stopping there, but wait a minute. There's another revelation. What? I want to check that out. Oops. I got that. Now I get it. Thank you, Jesus, for not answering my prayer. I get it now. Anybody live around Cords Lake? Here? No. One, three, four. Who lives in Cords? Oh, yeah. Uh, six, seven. This is our village. Eight, nine. Nine people live around here? You guys live here? Yeah. Okay. Some of them are in the surrounding areas also. All right. Listen, Cords Lake's going to hell in the handbasket. Mm -hmm. The devil's taking this place, yeah. it's going down. There's only nine people who can do anything about it. Nine. They happen to all be here tonight. But they can't do anything until the nine fix the five. You wouldn't believe how many missionaries have been sitting in my office in tears. In tears. What happened to you? Well, I wanted to go mission, mission, minister to, you know, dwarfs in Tanzania. You know, well, what happened? Well, everybody got behind me. Uh, the church said, "Yeah, we'll go with the dwarfs. No problem. We'll support you." Oh, well, they all signed up. I, they give special services for me. They signed up. They said, "Yeah, I'll commit it this much, this much, that much for a month, this much for a month, that much for a month." Oh, we'll be praying for you back here in Cords Lake. Oh, no problem. Go, go get the dwarfs. The poor sap jumps on a plane and goes to Dwarfville in Africa and mysteriously the money dries up. The support petered out. Petered out. That's Hebrew. Petered. <laughs> what happened there? Whoa. Somebody didn't take care of those five things before they went to Dwarfville in Africa. Oops. The trip was a setup. The demons told them to go minister to the dwarfs in Tanzania. Why? So they could abandon them and leave them with nothing. Jesus. It happened to you. Yeah. You were praying for years. Dear Lord, 
I don't want to get married again. I don't want to die alone. I need, I need a good Christian man. I need a Christian man. To go to church? There's one right there. He pops up out of the carpet. It's like a miracle. You guys go to Denny's. You get the Grand Slam. He seems perfect. He said, you're hitting it off. Oh, he loves the Lord. Oh, he's got all kinds of God chatter. Pray the Lord, hallelujah. Serve the Lord, blah, 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 blah. What happened to that marriage? Well, hell came to breakfast. Why you were set up. You know why you got married, but you didn't take care of those five things first. Anybody here going to be a marriage counselor? I do marriage counseling. Well, if you are, okay. Before you tell them, you're okay to get married? You go through the big five. You guys getting married? Oh, okay. What kind of relationship did you have with your dad, sir? How about your mom? How did you, how'd that go? Oh, they were this and that. They were nuts. They were crazy. Oh, red flags. I'm getting some red flags in my counseling session. Yeah, you retaliated, didn't you? You didn't appreciate it. You took an offense. You fought back, didn't you? Well, yeah, anybody would. That's a normal thing. Yeah, it's normal if you want to pick up demons and die in misery. That's perfectly normal. If you want to get married again, you're going to fix that. Because I don't want you destroying her life. Her life's already been destroyed. This is her third marriage. Listen, I'm in Cords Lake, so I'm being a little extra blunt here. But these are truths you have to have to leave here. Because I just answered all your questions. Why can't Christians get their prayers answered? Why does this person have miracles happening and these 5,000 people don't? Why does this person have this anointing and the rest of these people don't? I just told you. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It takes guts to fix those things. It's tough. You've got to face it. That's the one thing Christians hate more than anything else, having to face themselves. The last person in the world they want to face is themselves. But if you want to get healed, you have to face yourself. That's right. Or you have to die the way the devil wants you to. No blessings, prayers not answered, can't get healed, weird physical problems, emotional problems, no friends, rejected by every place you go. Why don't they like me? I'm a nice person. I just told you why they don't like you. And yes, you are a nice person. Nice person doesn't have anything to do with this. Mm. Why well, love the Lord? I've got the Holy Spirit. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These five things have got to get fixed. But because you have the Holy Ghost, he will help you fix all five of them, 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody is ever left on their own. He never abandons anybody. Never. Except people who won't humble themselves. Right? That's what James said. You're in James. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will. Lift you up. Have you got one of the five? Two of the five? Three of the five? Do you? You confess it tonight. 
so you can get healed. That's my recommendation. Just confess it. Repent of it. You got a mother problem? Hey, join the club. Dad? You got a dad problem? Stepdad problem? Stepmom? She was crazy, wasn't she? Stepmom? Wow, what a nut she was. Ought. The devil sent your stepmom to your dad. They knew she was a psycho. They set him up to get to you. Demons work on uh, second, third, and fourth marriages. They're all setups to get the kids. They've already got the parents. They want the kids. And so to do that, they have to draw in some nut into your mother's life or your father's life who is going to disrespect you and dishonor you or dishonor her or dishonor him. Something's going to happen and you're going to develop ought. And then the demons have got you. Now they can block your prayers. Because if you have ought against anyone and you bring your gift to God, don't give him the gift. That's what it says. Right, preach? Nice. That's exactly what it says. Amen. Preach said, Amen. Okay. <laughs> I got a voucher. <laughs> Your second, third, and fourth spouse was a setup to get your kids. <clears throat> Marriage counseling is worse now than it's ever been because there's so many blended families, right? <laughs> and you got all these this person's kids and this person's kids and now they're now they're having to interact okay and they don't fit well together and the parents who got married got married for love and when you get married for love you're doomed they don't think about the kids they don't think about the ramifications of who they're marrying their spiritual background what kind of five things they violated what kind of curses they have they don't think anything because they're in love 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 will kill you <laughs> because it will cause you to overlook <clears throat> objective things in the other spouse. Right? The devil's number one goal, get you close to someone that you care about who will abuse you. They've got you. They want you to hang around, live with, marry, whatever. A loser who abuses. That's why they sent him to you. And the more they hurt you, the more the sense of ought and injustice and disappointment and sorrow and heartache builds in your soul. Well, he seems so nice. He always talked about the Lord. He wanted to go to church. He went. Of course he did, fool. He was sent to you. You think you just ran into him there at the Calvary Chapel? cafeteria there having a latte? You think he was just sitting there by chance? He just fell in there out the door. Fell in the door and fell over there, huh? That, is that it? You ignorant fool. You were set up. He was sent. She was sent to you. Because they knew they would abuse you and dishonor you, disrespect you, and betray you. And they knew odd would develop in your soul. And once that happened, your spiritual life stopped right there. Stalled. 
I wanted to have a prayer room. I wanted to hand him ministry. I wanted to do this for God. I wanted to do that for God. But nothing ever happened. My brother Mike, I don't understand it. What's, why is God mad at me? He's not mad at you. It's Daniel. He didn't know his prayers were being blocked. He had no idea. He knew nothing. Now listen, I ain't leaving here till you're healed. I'm staying right here. Period. Huh? So, you got some repenting to do. Of course you do. God told you you did. You got a problem with your mother when you were young? Do you? Come down here and see me. You had a problem with your mother. You stabbed your mother in the back. You're well, brother Mike, I'm 73 now. Doesn't matter. Demons will torture you till you go into your grave at 82, at 90. Doesn't matter. They don't care about your age. You had a problem with your mother. Come on down here so you can get healed. All right. Dad's next. Dad. You had a rotten father. He cheated on your mom. He did all kinds of evil things to you. He abandoned you. He left your mom for another woman. Remember that one? Yeah. Come right down here. Come right here. Come here and stand and look at me here. Thank you. You had a bad dad. Turn around here, hon. Atta girl. You had a bad father. You had a bad father. He had a bad father. And you were offended at him. You got offended at him. Huh? Come on now. Number three. Let's go. You, you used to hate yourself when you were young. You hated yourself. You hated your body. You hated your looks. Your mother criticized you. When you were little, up one side and down the other. Nothing was ever good enough. The glass was always half empty. And she already, you, did, you did five things right. She found the sixth thing that you did wrong. Your mother. Your mother criticized you. Your dad abandoned you and ignored you. Your dad was distant with you. No hugs, no kisses, no love. He was gone all the time. Working or at the bar somewhere. Something happened. Your dad let you down. Your dad. You just went to this church over there, first church of happy people. But when you went over there, that somebody stabbed you in the back over there. Somebody, you, you left a, a church wound right here. Somebody betrayed you over here. Right here. You come down here. Some church betrayed you and stabbed you right in the back when you were young. Somebody let you down. Somebody abandoned you when they said they would help you, and they didn't. Remember that? And a little bit of ought ugh, developed in your soul. Ugh. Ought is emotional. You can feel it. It causes emotional pain. You were grown, you were married the first time, and your spouse was verbally abusive and ran you down. Called you every name in the book, made fun of your looks, your body, everything else. Your spouse, your parents, somebody verbally abused you. Come down here so we can get healed. You suffered from verbal abuse. Nothing was ever good enough. You were never good enough. You were fat, stupid, and ugly. Everybody trashed you. You were bullied in grade school. Bullying is one of the worst things that can happen to a human being. Bullying in grade school tears a person to shreds. It destroys their self-concept. 
You were bullied. Come down here. You are bullied. Okay. All right, well, that's good enough then. All right, let's close your eyes now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, first thing you got to do is relax. See how tense you are there? Just relax your body. Just relax your body. You know how to do it. Come on now. Relax your body there. Just let your body go. Relax yourself. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Faith healer right here. Thank you, Jesus. Just let your body relax. There she goes. This girl has a sensitive spirit. Love you, buddy. Thank you, Jesus. This kid's had racks of disappointments when he was young. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, gosh. Verbal abuse here. People taking advantage of you. Treating her like a doormat all the time. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Take a big breath there. Yeah, that's a girl. Take a big breath. Let's go. Take a breath, son. Come on, sweetheart. Take a big breath now. There you go. Take a big breath. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord, I ask you to forgive. Touch, Holy Spirit. I ask you to forgive me for what I've done to my mother. I said some terrible things about her. I was hurt. I was wounded. I said things I shouldn't have said. My dad, I trashed him. He abandoned us. He hurt us. I apologize for that. I should never have done that. I'm just like Brother Mike. I made the same mistakes Brother Mike did. I was so hard on my parents. They abandoned me. My dad let me down. Take a big breath. Big breath. The Holy Spirit's starting to move here. Just relax. You got to relax. Just relax. The Holy Ghost moving now. Starting to move. You got to relax. Okay? Okay. I'm like, come on now. Okay, now listen. Uh, this, this gal here is a very intelligent person. Okay? She thinks too much. Okay? Miracles come through childlike faith, not in high intelligence. You follow? And you are very intelligent and you think too much. Right? Just take a big breath and relax. Thank you, Jesus. Come on out of there. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe out of your mouth. Just breathe out of your mouth. Come out of there. Come on out of there. Come out. Come on out, quickly. Come on out. Now listen, you've been doubting. You're a big doubter. Aren't you? Yeah. You remember talking to me over there? Yeah. That was doubt. Okay, you're going to repent of it right now. Dear Jesus, please forgive me. Have mercy upon my soul, Lord. Please forgive me. Okay. Did you have a bunch of bad men? I've had a bunch, but I've had two bad men. Were they hard on you? The, the men? Were they good to you? Hey, just close your eyes. But they weren't. Yeah. What's their names? Dan and Gary. All right. Now, Dan and Gary are in here. And once they come out of there, you'll be another person. Yeah. Because truthfully, you got a good heart. And you're very intelligent. You're like her. She's bright. You're bright. Right? I, I, correct? Now that girl's smart too. Her. Very intelligent. Intelligence is bad. Because sometimes people who are intelligent overthink spiritual things. So childlike faith is the key. Like, like a baby, like a kid. Okay? Close your eyes. Ready? Father God, you see this beautiful woman standing here? The devil sent her two bad men. He sent them to her deliberately. They looked great coming in, and they tore her soul coming out. And they are still in there, stealing her joy and her happiness and her peace. And they must come out tonight. But first, we have to forgive them. We have to forgive those two men. And so, Lord, I ask you to hunt those two guys down. And I want you to put your hands on them. And tell them that we are praying for them. And we are forgiving them. And we are asking you to bless them. Thus saith the Lord. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. 
pray for those who despitefully use you, and we are praying for them, and all their spirits must come out of the woman of God tonight. In the name of Jesus, we forgive them and release them. That a girl, that's the Holy Ghost coming on you, honey. Go ahead. Just open your heart up. He's coming right on you. He's coming right on you. Thank you, Jesus. I want every spirit from both of my ex-husbands. They were they both had demons. Both of them had ex-husbands. Both my ex-husbands. Both of them must come out in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Yeah. Come on out. All these people that have been rejecting you for decades, yeah. they got to come out of there. They got to come out of there. Your Heavenly Father never rejected you for a second. It never happened. And this exhaustion you have in your soul, you, love, you have exhaustion in your soul. It's got to come out right now. Come on out, Spirit. Let's go. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Unbelief and doubt. There it is. That's the Holy Spirit touching you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, and Spirit, let her go. Spirit, let her go. Let her go right now. Let her go right now. Come out of there. In the name of Jesus, heal. Come out of that body right now. Go. In Jesus' name, heal. Come out of that body right now. All these years of exhaustion, pooped, worn out, disappointments, sorrows, heartaches. Oh. Now, lift out of me. I release them to you, Lord, and I'm letting them go now. All this doubt and unbelief, I let it go. Right now. I let it go now. Come out. Satan, loose your hold of the woman of God. Lose your hold of her. Come up and out right now. Come up and out that Lose your hold of her right now. Come out of that body. Come out of her tummy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take a couple deep breaths. Come out of there. Come out. Come out, Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost and be healed. Heal. Father God, I have to find my destiny before my life is over. I'm at the age I can't waste any more time. I'm just like Brother Mike. I don't have any years left to waste. I can't do it. Release me, Spirit. Release me. Come out now. I'm just going to tell you, so, I, you know, I don't, all this stuff that you've said, I've experienced, but I feel like I've worked through it, I've repented, I've seen the victory, but I am having horrible headaches, horrible swelling in my lymph well, nodes. Well, if you've already repented, then we're 90% we're there. Yeah. That, that's a spirit doing that. That's not you. Yeah, I know. And, no, you've already you repented. Talking, I felt something like right here. The no, that's him moving. Yeah, yeah, I know. There, he's in there. He's doing that. So, You're fine. You already repented. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I already repented. And so now, you rotten devil, I felt you moving in there. Come out right now. You come out of my throat. Come out of there right this second. Come out of there. Come up. I felt you in there. I know you're in there. Come out right now. Get out of my body. I already repented. You can't hold that over me anymore now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. I release my husband in the name of Jesus. And I release myself. I release myself from being hard on me. Critical of me. There it is. Come on out. Keep coughing. There he comes. Now he's coming out. Come out of her side. Come out of her side. There it is. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out, Spirit. I release myself tonight. I forgive myself. I have self ought and I'm going to release it tonight. Out you go. Come out of there. Self, there it is. There he comes. Come on out. Come out quickly. Come out right now. I, I release myself into the hands of the Lord. I let myself go. I repent of being hard on myself, critical of myself, holding myself to impossible standards. I quit right now in Jesus' name. 
Heal. 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 You got any pain in your body? I don't know. You have any arthritis or anything? No. Have you, did you used to have depression when you were younger? I've, I've, I have had depression at different times. You have? What triggered it? Every spirit of self-hatred. Depression. I don't know. Maybe the ex-husband. The rejection. The abandonment. Maybe all the work that I go through and trying to get delivered on a daily basis. The dreams that God gives me. I just get so weary and tired of trying to get free. You know? Yeah. The roots of bitterness and offense and stuff like that. You know? All right. Let's do it. Let's go the opposite end then. Let's go the easy route. Okay, take a big breath and release it. Lord, I already prayed and that's it. Go now. Come out now. I already prayed. Lead me now. Every transfer of spirit from my husband goes now. I release them in Jesus' name. I release myself in Jesus' name. Let me go now. Let me go now. Let me go now. Come out now. You speak in tongues. Go ahead. Louder. 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 Good. You come up right now. Thank you, Jesus. No, that's not. That's not enough. Stop trying to hide. Come out there right now. There he comes. Louder. Real loud. Real loud. And go. Get out of her throat. Come out of that throat right now. Come out. Right now. Quickly. Come out. Come out, I said. Come out right now. Quickly. Quickly come out. Come out right now. Hey. Hey, Mike. Brian. You used to be on drugs? Huh? Were you on drugs before? Drugs and being put up for adoption and being left behind. Oh, okay. Well, what happened was, when you was little, a spirit of rejection entered your body. And he's the one that got you hooked on drugs before. He's the one behind all this. And it was probably when you were a kid. Who hurt you when you were a kid? My stepdad. Not having a real dad around. What was his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. All right. Can I, it's okay it's if I pray for you. It's the whole thing of having, not having a dad around when I was growing up. Yeah. When you were how old? Eight. Okay. Now, thank you, Jesus. Ready? Take a big breath. What's your name? Brian. Father God, I got Brian here. And when he was young, through no fault of his own, this rejection demon entered. And then he let in a fear demon. That's him. He just jumped. And then he turned him into an addict. So right now, Lord, I ask you to forgive his stepdad if he's still alive. I ask for mercy for him. I ask you to have mercy on him. And I ask you tonight to remove this abandonment spirit from his dad out of his stomach right now. In Jesus' name, I release my dad from my soul right now in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out of there. I release my dad from my soul right now. His dad abandoned him. I let him go. There he is right there. Come on out. Come out of his throat. Come out. There he is right there. Spirit, come out of there. Devil, come out of him. Right there. He's right there. That's him. Spirit, come out. Every demon from his dad. Come out. Abandonment. Rejection. Low self-esteem. Self-hatred. Drugs. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come out of there. Good. Keep breathing. Come out of his lungs. Come out of them lungs. Come out of his lungs. Come out of there, you addict. You stinking addict. I command you. Come out of that body right now. Satan, lose your hold. Come out. I release my dad from my soul right now. I let him go. There he is. Come out, spirit. Come out of there, quickly. Come out of him. You sinking drug addict demon, come out. Come out right now. 
Come out of there, quickly. There he is, right there. Come out, there, that's him right there. Come out of his throat. Spirit, come out. Spirit of hatred and anger, come out. Right there, come out right now. Come out, you're not going to give him a heart attack. You're not going to kill him. Come out of that body right now. Demon of death, I command you, come out of the man of God. Come out right now. Come out of his throat. Keep breathing. Come out of that throat. There he is. Spirit from his dad. Stepdad demons, come out. Stepdad, come out. Stepdad. That's him right there. I bind your powers. I command you to let his mind loose. I command you to loose his mind. In Jesus' name. I command you to loose his mind. Come out of that body right now. Quickly. Quick, quick, quick. Come out right now. Spirit, I command you to come out of me. Say that. I command you to come out. There you go. Say that. Good. Come out of my body right now. I command you to come out. Every demon from my dad. Every demon from my stepdad. Every demon from drugs. Alcohol. Pornography. Go. God, there he is. Porn demon. Come on. Come up in Jesus' name. Pornography. Out. Pornography. Come up. Come up. Wickedness and evil. Come up. Come out of me. I'm turning my life over to the Lord. You can't stop me, you devil. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. I receive you now. Devil, come out of me. Come out of me. I'm turning my life over to the Lord. Come out of me. I'm turning my life over to Jesus. Come out of me. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Satan, lose your hold of me. Get out of my body. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Give me something here. Come on. Out. There he is. Come out of there. Stepdad demons. Come out. Come out, buddy. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Come out of him. Come out. Come out of his lungs. There he is. Come out of his heart. That's him right there. Take your claws out of him. Take your claws and go. Take your claws and go. Come out. Come out. Take your claws and go. Take your claws and go. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Satan. Demon of drugs. Come out. Pornography, I curse you. Come out of that body right now. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, for what I've done. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me, dear Lord. Please forgive me. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of taking drugs. Forgive me for getting drunk. Oh, God, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on my soul. God, have mercy on me. Oh, Jesus, help me. God, please forgive me. God, please forgive me. Help me, dear Lord. Help me, dear Lord. Heal me. Heal my body now, Lord. Heal my body now. Heal my body. You got pain in your body? A little bit. Where at? Where is it at? My lower back. Low back? Did you hurt it? I heard doing something. All right. Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask you to heal. Heal. Spirit, come out of that back. Go. Heal. All right, check your back out. Is it worse, better, or the same? Better. It's better? All right. Is there any pain left? Is there anybody you can think of you got to forgive? Nope. Anybody? Nope. How about yourself? Yes. Sorry to myself. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and repent of it. Dear Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for holding a grudge against myself. I got ought against myself. Please forgive me. I got self ought against myself. I'm so sorry. I repent of it right now. I repent of it now. In Jesus' holy name. And I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Heal. All right, check your back out. Is it worse, better, or the same? It's better? Yep. Okay. You sure you forgave yourself? Yep. And you need to forgive anybody else? 
Right. My parents, my what? They were just growing up that I didn't forget. So who'd you I have? Always, I was always raised that you know, forgive somebody, <laughs> it's done. I couldn't forgive. I couldn't. Forgive who? My, just my parents growing up. What's your mom's name? Cheryl. Cheryl, okay. Let's do it right now. Is she still alive? I don't know. She, she, when she gave me up, she, she turned herself into a mental institution. Oh, okay. Now, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to hunt down his mother, Cheryl. I want you to tell her that he and I are, have forgiven her. We have let this thing go. And after all these years and all this pain, we're going to forgive her tonight completely. I should have done it years ago. I'm doing it tonight. Go ahead. Dear Lord, I'm sorry I had a ought against my mother and I forgive her for what she did. The demons took her and threw her in a mental institution. And I forgive her. I heard her. If she was here right now, I'd apologize to her. In Jesus' name. And I let my mother, Cheryl was her name? Yep. I let my mother out of my soul right now. Okay, take a big breath. Cheryl, I command you to leave. Cheryl, leave. I let my mother go. Keep blowing. Breathe. I let my mother go now. Now. And your, and your dad? I just don't know my dad. You didn't know him? Okay, go ahead and forgive him. Only the love of Jesus, only the love of our heavenly Father can come in. Good. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you. How are you feeling right now? Uh, raise your hands. Tell the Lord you love Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for healing my back. Healing my back. Thank you for washing my sins away. Drugs and porn and all these wounds. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Take off down there and see how your back's feeling. Faster. Faster. What happened? I feel like a, a ball has lifted off my shoulders. Hey, uh, are you limping? No. <laughs> sit, sit down there and push your butt all the way up there. Now, uh, put his feet together and then kind of lift him up like this. And put your thumb. Real easy. Lift him up. Now, you know where your ankle knuckle is on your, the bone there that sticks out? The ankle knuckle? Put your thumb on top of it. Right on top of it. Yes. Okay. Okay, now, are you right on top of it? Yes. You sure? Right there. Okay. Well, this leg here looks a little longer than that one, doesn't it? Yeah. Is this leg shorter than that one? I think this one's longer. See? This one's longer. Yes. Okay. Ready? Thank you, Jesus. Ready? All right, Lord. I ask you to heal this leg. Stretch it out. Heal. Stretch out. Stretch it out, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Stretch it out. Anything? Anything? Okay, now, can you think of anybody when you were young you had a grudge against? Uh, did you ever curse yourself? No. 
Did somebody else? Huh? Suppressed. Your, your dad suppressed your... I was suppressed. Suppressed. Thank you for From speaking and from expressing yourself and expressing heal. your heart. Heal. 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 I can Anything? We have a we have Christ who is our point here, joint here. I think so. His toes just pointed up in the air, so it's kind of this one. Are they still off? Or are they equal? I'm not sure that it's off now. I think that it's just his foot. His his foot is tilted more. See how his foot is tilted more? And that's what she's gonna see. She's gonna come in. She's gonna come in and do that for me. Okay. Now uh, walk down there again, would you? Walk down there. Any change? What's going on with you? Um, I had a concussion three and a half years ago. And oh. I could have been knocked out. Oh, it was in a storm for. with a boat smacking for. me in the back of the that's head extremely heart. hard. Oh, we'll and I was just recently diagnosed with severe we'll concussion from it. I also have the optic nerve and brain dysfunction. They don't know how to treat it. It's been going on since November 1999. And the doctors don't even know what unstable vision is. They don't know what I'm talking about. I tell them the doctor who diagnosed me, they know him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, take off your glasses. Yeah. And what's your symptoms? I can't see. His, his vision is clear but blurry. Because from the from the concussion. And if I, well, from the the unstable vision. If I read the Bible for half an hour, I have to take a nap for two hours. It just pulls on the back of my eyes, a big pressure, not a headache. Now, was that a fall you hit your head? Or was that a car wreck? No. Nope. What hit it? Nothing hit it. I mean, before, in the 1999, it was, yeah. they don't know. They don't know what could have caused it. They don't know why. And for a period of time before that, I had 20-20 vision. Maybe a span of four months, six months. Before that, I had other, you know, like, typical eye issues. But it just went into that. They don't now, know. now, were you married back then, in 99? Yeah. Well, did anything bad happen to you? In 1999 or 98? Do you have any trauma back then? Well, like, you know, you're speaking of you know, any husband issues. And he died in Vietnam and was brought back to life. And he sees his son himself in the torment still. Like it's fresh in his memory. Yes. Oh, you're still married to him? Yeah. What's his name? Jim. He's outside. He can't come in because of anxiety. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this, this, is, the, this is the easy one. Her husband got loaded with demons in Vietnam. Yes. I've seen this a hundred times. Yes. And the demons give him PTSD. Yes. Those are fear demons. Yes. yes. And uh, combat is the worst. Um, he saw uh, war crimes. He was involved and forced yeah, to be involved. That's in the worst crimes. thing a human can be involved in is combat. Yes. The highest level of stress known to man. Combat. Right. And so then his demons came back, boop, and jumped in her. And that gave her these symptoms. Yes. What's his name again? Jim. Jim. Okay, let's take a shot at that. You ready? Okay. Just close your eyes there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to uh, tell you how sorry I am about Jim and all the suffering and pain that poor guy has gone through. The demons threw everybody in a meat grinder over there. And they destroyed everybody they got their hands on. Everybody came back broken and wounded, and most of them never recovered. And so I'm asking you to hunt Jim down tonight. He's in the car out there, and he's got fear spirits from Vietnam. And you are able to heal him. But some of these spirits transferred into his wife, and they attacked her brain. 
And all of Jim's spirits need to come out of there tonight in the name of Jesus. All right, take a big breath and blow. Keep blowing. Come out. Come out, keep blowing. Keep blowing. Jim, come on out. Jim. Every demon from Vietnam that got into her brain, we command you to come out right now in the name of the Lord. Jim, come on out. Come out of your wife. Let her go. Come out of her brain. Come out of her eyes. Come out of them eyes. Come out of her mind. All the suffering she's gone through, all the pain of having to take care of him and make accommodations for him and sacrifice her life for him. She's put in untold hours trying to help him and heal him. Nothing's worked. And tonight all that burden from Jim must come out. Right now, come on out. Jim, let's go. Jim, come on out. Come out of her lungs. Come on out there. You Vietnam wicked spirit. Come, come out of that body right now. Come on out of her. Come out of there. Jim. Jim. Come out. You're trying to destroy her. Come out of there. Come out of there. I release my husband into the hands of the Lord. I let him go for the rest of my life. He's in your hands, Lord. And I'm out of this. I'm releasing him. Jim, go to Jesus now. Go to Jesus now. Come out now. Right now. Heal. Come out now. Of my own free will, I release my husband. Go. I let my husband go. Go. I, I want freedom. I let my husband go. Right now. I just hand him over to the Lord. Out. All these years of suffering, all this caretaker, working as a nurse's aide, a psych tech, a shrink, carrying these burdens, having to fix everything all the time, having to be the husband and the wife at home. All of this exhaustion must go. Out. Out, you stuff. Go. Come out there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Mm. She might need a woman. She what? She might need a woman. Her um, husband had PTSD in um, in Vietnam, and the demons transferred into her brain when he came back oh. in 1999. Okay. Okay. And she's got to release her husband. Uh, Jim. Jim. He's too too afraid to come in. Hey, listen. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, when you when you go over a long period of time and you're trying to get delivered, the demons always send you people to help you. They send you deliverance ministers to try to help you. And that gives the person more confusion. And then, over a long period of time, they get exhausted. How'd that go? They get exhausted from trying to get delivered. 
You had what? I've had I had Steve and Diane Barry the last couple of years. I've had oh no! No, no, don't don't do any of that anymore. That's not. Well, she passed away. Yeah, she's dead. I know. Uh, but don't, don't get involved in any of that stuff anymore. Uh, people giving you words, prophetic words, prophecies, all that stuff. All you do is go to so, service. It's only like four of us or five of us that really go. Yeah, well, there's, that's okay. But you I don't, don't go to any other churches. Oh, that's okay. Any other Christians or anything? Yeah, over a period of time, you get confused. And then the person gets frustrated. When Galatians had it, it's the simplicity of Christ. Now, for example, this girl here, she walks up to me before this service. She says, is it possible for me to get healed? Okay. She's already asked a thousand people about her healing. So now she's chronically confused. <laughs> she lots of different so, yeah, so she came down here. And I just did something simple with her, and the Holy Spirit just jumped right on her. I already felt the Holy Spirit. I know you did. What's your name? But, Jennifer. But the simpler you keep it. See? See, love is simple. And it's free. Love's free and love's simple. See? But if you try to figure everything out, it generates doubt and confusion. And then that blocks her healing. See? Do you speak in tongues? You don't. Okay. So, what you do is you uh, tell the person to close their eyes for a second and then you, you have them repeat after you just repeat after me Boya Basa Kemo Satia Vekoba Andorea okay did you notice that I was speaking in short syllables you notice that did you notice I was using different syllables I wasn't using the same syllables I was using different ones Okay. The Greek word for tongues is glossa, and it's a language like every other language, English, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, it's all made up of syllables. But it's a language that we don't understand. You won't understand it, but the Holy Spirit interprets it, and then he applies it to here and there. Okay, you speak in tongues? Okay. All right, now go ahead. That's what I have. That's all I have. <laughs> That's all she has. Now, see, her tongues is blocked. So you go through it the same way here. Okay, you close your eyes there and just repeat after me. Now, did you notice how she tensed up when I said that? Did you see her? She tensed up because she felt uncomfortable when I said that. She instantly went like that. Okay? Um, so what you got to do is get them to relax. So sometimes I'll just kind of shake them a little, get them to just cool off. Okay? And then now you repeat after me now. Ula shasa. Veko masi. Endolava. Akuria. Now, so did you notice I was speaking in short syllables there? I was using different syllables. You notice hers went click, 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 stop. And then it crashed. She said, crash. Did you notice that when she was like, okay? So then you have them try again. Now you follow me. And then you follow me and then you just add some syllables from your language and just different ones and then kind of keep going. Ready? Yemo shavasa velo vaki ekuna mashanda. Bole bere paro bashata fesi elo masa masan telo mashatia bola masha good girl Thundra. try that keep going just add different ones ready okay now oh, now we blew it now did you see her mind kick in there she started analyzing this because her IQ is above, above average she's 
Oh, right. Okay. This is kind of like horse whispering with people. Okay. Now I don't know what that is, but <laughs> listen, you're think. Don't think about it. You just release it. Okay. And people with higher IQs, they struggle with that. Spiritual things. They have trouble with it because they're analyzing things all the time. Does it go this way, that way? Hmm. Well, what do I have to do to get that? What do I have to do to this to go to there? How does this fit in? Where does it? See? So you got to get them to relax. Okay? Okay. Good girl, follow her. Good, see how she does it? She, her language is very good. Take it out. Go. Ura mashava. Any syllable. At a girl. Ura mashanda. Velo vashati moshuta. Good girl. Ura mashaha. Velo vashamasita. Alama mama shandara. Drondo shandara bosita deve. Ula mashanda. Good, perfect, just like that. Good, good, good. Keep going. Ura mashada rashetemo. Andora mashata. Any syllable. Any syllable. Ula shata baba. And a girl. Andora mashata ramo sibe. There you go, good. Keep going, sweetheart. Perfect, keep going. Umo shandra mo shadrasa. Hero mo shandri mo shadra mama. You speak in tongues? Oh, just very rarely. Go ahead. Try it now. Yeah, right now. Keep going. It's kind right of a, now. seems to be a block. Uh, yeah, it's it's you. Go yeah, ahead. I know. Bala vashata. Velo mashi. You repeat after me. Boya masa. Pelo shativa. Pelo shativa. Bekoba. Perfect. Now you add some syllables on your own. Ready? What's she say? What? What did she just say? What did she say? Yeah. I don't know. Only God knows. Uh, hey, were you speaking in tongues? I just said. Okay. Now, do that, but then switch to a different syllable. Okay. Did you hear what she said? She said. No. That's not tongues, that's blocked. Okay, she's almost there. Uh -huh. okay. does, does being baptized have to do with it? No. You just close your eyes, right? Faith has everything to do with it. What it the other stuff has nothing to do with it. velo masive. Just gently, that a girl. Good. Now you help her. Uramashande. Veko mashandrime. Good. Different syllables. Kura mosha drama sava. She doing it? Yep. Atta girl. Kura mosha drama sheda. Nice meeting you. My pleasure. Yeah, indeed. Thank you for coming. So, question for you. So, yeah. just to recap the five years, um, there's lot, doubt, mother, father, and wife. Five things you talked about. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how do you spell that word "ot"? O u g h t in the King James. I'm not sure how they spell it in other Bible. Oh. The Greek phrase is "itis," uh -huh. and it's it's in your soul, hmm. not your spirit, man. Your soul. It's a negative sense or feeling or emotion about something or somebody mm -hmm. or yourself. Okay. And that will, that'll crush your prayers. Mm -hmm. so I went into the Bible and I went into the Bible and. Did a little digging, and it says um, before the um, before the altar um, actually reconciles. So I mm -hmm. say that's a step above forgiveness. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, but if the person's dead, mm -hmm. or they're in prison, or they're in Guam, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But you can get rid of the ought for them. Okay. Right. So if if you were abused by your stepdad, and your stepdad's dead. There's no way to reconcile anything. Fortunately, I was blessed enough to have loving parents. Oh, good. And they were really supportive, but just me, I noticed from, from when I was a baby up to this point, 
there's probably multiple instances where I fail to honor them. You what? Multiple instances where I fail to honor them. Okay, did you repent of it? Now go ahead right now then. Okay. Dear Lord Jesus, go ahead. That's before I got to I repent of that. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I release it from my soul right now to count of three. One, two, and three. When I was thinking, um, so you speak in tongues? Unfortunately, I wasn't blessed with that ability. Okay, now, what you just said was a lie. Everybody, are you born again? Yes. Okay. You have the Holy Ghost? I do Okay, now, that was another lie. Mm -hmm. be Your mind's full of lies. Okay, so let's fix them real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a born-again Christian, you're ever, every born-again Christian has the Holy Spirit in their spirit, man, right in there. Mm -hmm. Every one of them, 100% of them. Mm -hmm. When you have the Holy Spirit, you already have all of your gifts mm -hmm. and your anointings and everything else in life. Because mm -hmm. He has everything. Mm -hmm. He has everything, right? No one would argue that. And he's loaded with everything. Mm -hmm. And then some. Mm -hmm. And then some. Stay right here. So, that means you have your gift of tongues, you just haven't released it. You already have it. You don't get tongues, you're releasing it. Are you a born again Christian? Okay, well she has the Holy Spirit, so do you. So she already had her gift of tongues, and she just got it released tonight. She released it over here, right? It's not something you're given, you already have it. Plus your call from God in life is already in there. Whatever you're called to do, faith healer, preacher, teacher, whatever, all those gifts are already in there. They're already there. Because he has everything. Doesn't he? You told me he did. The Holy Spirit has everything. You have it all. You have to release it. And it's released by faith. Without doubting. Remember? Number four, doubting. See that? Because uh, just this Monday, I had a, like an encounter with an angel. He whispered in my ear, but I could not understand because he was speaking in, in a different language, and I was trying to understand it. That's okay. Uh, you got the Holy Ghost. You don't need an angel. The Holy Ghost is way up there. Angels are way down here. You already got everything in the world right in there. Let's skip them and go with him. You follow? Why would I want to go down to an angel when I got the Holy Spirit? Oh, that would be like me trading a Lamborghini in for a vehicle from the junkyard. Okay. So the Holy Spirit is God, but the angels were created by God. They're just a... Uh, they're, they're higher than us. No, no. In, in, the, in the next life, you're higher than them. In, in, the, in the new kingdom, you're higher than them. The Christians judge angels, Paul said. Angels are down here. You're up here. You don't need an angel. You got the Holy Ghost. He's got everything. Angels don't have everything. They're just angels. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to go up the ladder. <laughs>